Welcome back to John's Films. This week, Nikon released its 2.0 firmware for the Nikon Z9 flagship camera. It enabled 8K 60 frames per second raw capture. This raw capture is not something that existed before, and DaVinci Resolve is only one of two video editing programs that can deal with it. Let's see how DaVinci Resolve edits some Nikon in raw footage that I shot this morning. I gotta tell you, I'm incredibly impressed with the Nikon Z9. The more I have it in my hands, the more I want one. Thank you to my buddy who loaned it to me. Here we can see playback of 8K, 24 frames per second, raw footage. It runs pretty cleanly, and I'm using MSI Afterburner here so that we can see what's being run. This is the CPU utilization at the top, and the second line is GPU utilization. Clearly, the decode is being run by the GPU. Ah, but what have I done here? I have a stacked timeline. The reason this timeline is stacked is because a proxy is automatically generated, a 1920 by 1080 full HD proxy as an MP4 file every time that you record a RAW file. Now, if we play back the RAW file, we do again see that there's most of the work being done in the GPU, but it's a much different story as we get into editing and color grading. How far can we push this footage? So I stacked the timeline because I wanted to see if I was going to need to use the proxy for editing or if my 5950X 16 core processor and RTX 3090 could keep up. At this point, they're keeping up just fine with ungraded footage as we move towards grading it. Let's see what happens. First, I'm gonna jump over to my color page. I wanna show you my options as raw footage. Most of us are seeing this at the color wheels, but as we look over in these panels, there's a panel to the left many of us have never used called Camera Raw. This is where you're able to define how the raw footage is decoded and translated for the program. I'm going to use full resolution and I'll decode at the clip level. Notice it gives me the options to change the white balance today, right now. I can change it as a default setting or I can change the color temperature myself. I can change the color space that this was recorded in, turn it from HDR to SDR or otherwise, and I can change the gamma. I shot this in an in-log gamma, which is a log profile allowing me to capture more gradient between bright and dark. One thing that's missing here that I really enjoyed when shooting my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K RAW footage was the ability to change ISO in post. And that is a huge deal. It was a major draw for me to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, which has two native ISOs. And in bracketing around those, I could shift the ISO in post. That was a huge deal. It would remove any noise that was getting read off the sensor if I wanted to, or I could crank up the overall exposure with it. Instead here, we're going to be stuck with these changes, which you can see as I really expose this up, we can start to see the footage break apart given that I shot it in darn near 100% darkness, to be honest. Shot it with the Nikkor 24-70 f2.8 lens wide open, but still, you know, this is dark footage. Uh, looks like quite a lot of light coming in there, but in truth, it was really dark. Now, the footage is just basically graded. We can go on with that and make it prettier, but let's just see what it looks like and how well it plays back as we take a look at this. Here we go. And playback is still running along, keeping up here in the top left, you can see 24 frames per second. It's got some noise in it though, and so that's something I want to go address. And this is one of the first things I noticed, and it's not unique to the Nikon raw footage format. In fact, this is running really cleanly for a very first generation raw footage. But if we add noise reduction, let's see what this does to the playback. I can tell you real quickly, it's gonna, it's gonna create the pain. You can see now the CPU spiked quite a bit. The GPU is now getting even more work, but it is keeping around 22, 21 frames per second. So if we had it turned on and enabled caching, this would turn into not a big deal after one run through. A little tip for you, if you were to run noise reduction and then right click on it, come to node cache and force the node cache with an on, you can avoid paying that price and that noise reduction going forward, but you can still make changes to the further nodes. That's why the noise reduction node always goes first. Now let's find out what happens if we move up into 60 frames per second footage. In this shot, I dolly back and you can see old hands aren't as stable as they used to be, but you're also finding out very quickly that because I have color graded this node, it is dying. If I turn off the color grade, 
My timeline's 24 frames per second and the 60 frames per second footage is running back just fine. I'm gonna change the clip speed. We're gonna run at 40%, which should take the 60 frame per second footage, translate it down to 24 frames per second, giving us a slower motion. And sure enough, we've got about a 60% slow-mo here, which is pulling back pretty nicely. I'm gonna use the trim edit mode by hitting T and then I'm gonna slide this footage to the left just a little bit because I, there we go. I was a little ahead in that clip. As I turn on my color and effects here in the color page, we can see what happens with the footage. You'll notice as I play this back, I've turned on noise reduction in a pretty strong way here with this 60 frame per second clip, which I've slowed down to 24 frames by second in playback. Further, I've got white balance exposure and a LUT applied to it. Honestly though, the pain is coming from that noise reduction. If we get rid of the noise reduction and we start to play back, you'll notice I can run 24 frames per second. Color grading this footage is going to be no problem. This is again, 60 frame per second footage, which I've slowed down to 24 frames per second. Other than be a little noisy because I shot this outside at five in the morning, it looks really good. I'm extremely excited about the raw capabilities coming out of this Nikon Z9. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see some more tests associated with this and more DaVinci Resolve 18 tests. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're not so that you don't miss anything I've got coming out with DaVinci Resolve 18 and have a great day.